Hey, hey, this is Alexey from Ace5 Studios, and I've been seeing a lot of people ask about how to make glass renders in Cinema 4D, both on Slack channels, Discord channels, forums, so I decided to make a quick tutorial because I kept on explaining it, and this time you can just watch it, and hopefully it'll be like under 10 minutes. So step one, we need a bottle. Found this somewhere in my hard drive. Uh, when you render stuff in general, it's a good idea to make sure that your stuff isn't too small. For example, this bottle is too small. It should be bigger because when you set up lights, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So let's scale it up. So it's about the size of a cube. Delete the cube now. Let's move this bottle up. So it's sitting on the floor. You can check in your side views if it's sitting on the floor or not. Great. Now, um, let's get started with materials. Double click, create a material. Um, make sure you go into reflectance and you delete this default specular. It's ugly and nobody likes it. <laughs> I'm assuming you're using R18 or you're using one of the Cinema 40s with a reflectance channel. If not, just add a reflection and add a Fresnel to it. But with a new reflectance channel, it's been around since version 16, I think. Um, basically, what we do is we close this, we've got a layer of Fresnel, and turn on dielectric and glass here. And then we turn on transparency, and you'll see it disappears. So I'm going to refraction thing, I can jack it up. And you can just eyeball it how you want your glass to look. Or you can go here and pick glass again, which is pretty close to what I eyeball it, around 1.5. And then we drag and apply this to our bottle. So this is our standard glass. Um, let's make a quick studio setup so that we, because that's important for render. Because if you just hit render now, it's gonna be transparent. So we're gonna set up a plane. Let's scale this guy up. Um, make sure our plane has got some subdivisions in it, drag it out so it's bigger, move it out so it's like so. Let's make a little bend deformer and rotate this guy 90 degrees, move him here, and then from the side view just grab this, let's first child him under a plane, and then just drag this guy up. Um, as you can see, there is a serious lack of polygons there, so let's, nope. Let's drag our height segments up. Maybe 200 is a bit too much. 100 segments, all good. Now, you might want to move this bend deformer a bit further down and move our plane a bit in so we have a bit of space in front of the bottle here. Now, if we hit render now, we will... There you go, we've got some glass going on. Basic glass is great. Now, the next thing we're going to do is you want to add an area light and you want to make sure it's pointing down, rotate tool, and move this guy up above the bottle and scale him way up. You want him to be pretty high. Move him up so you can't see him inside the viewport and hit render. Eh. The light, we want to turn on shadows to area shadows and we want it to be show and render and show in reflection, and hit Control r There you go, now you see your light in the reflection. Good stuff. As you notice, there's still no shadows, that's because your glass material is completely transparent. So drag this transparency down a bit to like 89, and hit Render. There you go, we've got a bit of shadows, and we pretty much got a bottle here, I can see. How neat is that? We're halfway there. Now the next thing that's important for these kind of scenes is an HDRI map. So we make a sky, uh, we make a material, and then we go to the internet. There's a website called hdrlabs.com, great website. And if you press on the smart Sybil or Sybil archive, here, Sybil archive link, they have great HDRIs here. Personally, I really like this Newport Loft one with the potatoes. Can't really see the potatoes, but it's just a weird preview they picked. So I've already downloaded it. And I have it here. I'm going to get the, get the, grab the Newport Loft uh, ref.hdr. And in my material here, I'm just going to drag it into the color texture channel. So into here. And press no. And now we're going to hit render. And nothing changed because we forgot to apply it to the sky. I'm going to hit render. And now you can see we have reflections. So we're already getting there slowly and steadily. The next step is let's add some global illumination. Let's add effects, global illumination, 
change this to light mapping and let's hit render. Okay, we're slowly getting there. Pretty nice, right? I would make the background material just white, just like that on the plane. And the next thing that I would really suggest we do here is I would add a different camera. So let's make a camera and let's make this camera, give it focal length of 80 millimeters. I will make a little tutorial about cameras and why you see it kind of zooms in, but basically what it does is it makes things slightly more kind of flat and more like when you do photo shoots in real life, this is probably how you're going to be doing it. And now let's hit, let's actually output, let's make this block ratio, let's make it like 640 and let's just render it to our picture viewer. And this way we can see what we have. And you probably want to change the color as well to match the thing that we had before. So once this renders, it's looking pretty good. So let's get our material, double click on it here, and let's drag our green down a bit. Also you see it goes white, that's because you probably want the color to be like black. And then when we hit render, we should get a nice green render. And there you have it. We have our bottle render. How great is that? So there you go, stop posting sketchy bottle renders with glass. You know exactly in six minutes and 50 seconds how to do a glass render of a bottle. I'll be making more tutorials about why to use cameras and whatnot and focal lengths later on. But for now, this is how you get glass in Cinema 4D. Well, if you want, also don't forget there's this option to, um, in the reflectance, you can, in layer one, you can rough up the roughness a bit, like to 12, and you can hit render. And oops, render. And it'll give you a rough kind of frosted glass look. It's also useful. I don't know if 12% is enough. We're about to find out. Yeah, there you go. So you now it's a bit frosted. It's not so, you know, it's slower, but it's not so, you know, crisp as it was before. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, also, for more realistic glass and renders, you can switch to physical, but it will take longer to render. So you've been warned, but it does make nicer results. Like I have my old renders here and you can see, where's my physical there? Yeah, there, this is the difference between physical and advanced. You can figure, you can try it out yourself. See, physical has much nicer shadows here and like a contact shadow, whereas the advanced one just kind of gets a white shadow. But it does take significantly longer to render. So I'm going to stop now. And there you go. Uh, don't forget to check out my website for more tutorials, for my stock humans, for my stock five man, and just a bunch of stuff. Also, I have a Discord channel now, which you can join if you have questions and I can help you out. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I really hope you enjoyed this and have a good one.